Hello. My name is Martin Mackey. I'm the director of the Rethinking Responsive Education Ventures project from the Maine Department of Education. Today is an exciting day. I am thrilled to announce we will be awarding over $2.2 million to innovative schools throughout the state of Maine to innovate pilots in outdoor ed, career exploration, marine science, online learning, and several others. I'm really excited to share this opportunity with you guys. And I'm gonna go through each one of the pilots, explain kind of what they're doing, and then have one of the individuals from the pilot talk a little bit about what they are doing. We're excited to share this and I'd like to start right now. Um, so we are giving away, uh, we, are, we are awarding $2.2 million to innovative pilots throughout the state. And REV is really a response to capturing the momentum of the pivot roughly two years ago when educators were asked to reinvent school overnight. We saw some amazing things happen to that. And the visionary leadership of the Department of Ed captured that, that spirit through the REV grant. The REV grant's a 17 million, roughly $17 million grant designed to capture the innovation and the momentum of that time frame. We have already given away several million dollars to innovative pilots and have pilots being implemented across the state for the past year. It's really exciting to be able to share this opportunity with you guys today. So today we are announcing that there are six additional pilots being awarded. They're, they're from, I'll start out with Telstar. So the Telstar has developed an experiential pathway that connects the local economy the environment to create sustainable real-time opportunities for students to explore place-based learning. I'd like the representative from Telstar to, uh, to talk a little bit about what their project is. You go ahead and do that. Mark? Thank you, Martin. Uh, my name is Mark Kenny. I'm the principal of Telstar Middle School and High School, and we're located in Bethel, Maine. And we are going to use our grant for our LEAF project, which is going to create some new course pathways that combines science and social studies courses to our local economy and local history. And for our students to be hands-on and work on their outside, we're also going to be building an outdoor pavilion and classroom space and a sugar shack so that our kids can work on their entrepreneurial skills to work in the business field a little bit and use all the trees here on campus to tap and see the whole process all the way through. So we're excited that we're gonna be able to start with grades 10, 11, and 12, starting in the fall for a couple courses and roll a few courses out each year. And then eventually, since we are a 612 complex, we're going to expand some pathway opportunities down to our middle school as well. So we'll have some 612 pathways working going forward. And the goal is that we have some internships and local business opportunities and partnerships for our students to work on in grades 11 and 12 tied to our local community and economy. Great, thank you so much. I'm excited to see how this comes out. Um, next, I'd best like to pass it on to East Grand School in Danforth, Maine, where they're developing a pre-K through 12 business pathway and curriculum. Um, it's a really exciting opportunity to infuse that area with some new ideas and, some, and capture some of the innovation that's already happening up there. I'd like to pass it on to Peggy White right now to talk a little bit about what their project is. Go ahead, Peg. Thank you, Martin. Um, we are in a remote area in Danforth, Maine. We are a pre-K-12 school with about 140 students. And we are trying to develop some business opportunities uh, to either draw people to the area, keep students in the area. And um, we will start with the, developing the pre-K-12 curriculum for a business pathway. Uh, our middle school is funding through the REV grant um, some community projects where they will um, have leadership opportunities and um, accept RFPs and then choose two projects from those RFPs to go out in the community and work with the community to fulfill those. And then lastly, we are looking at a feasibility study to bring um, real world work experiences to our students, hopefully involving the local hardware store as a learning lab where they would have work opportunities throughout high school years. So it's all encompassing pre-K through 12. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Peggy. I look forward to seeing that in action. Um, next, I'd like to pass it on to Portland Public Schools where they have an outdoor integration program designed for the cohort of pre-K through eighth grade teachers. Um, I'd like to pass it on to Katie West. Katie? Hey, thanks, Martin. 
Um, I really love what you said about capturing the momentum because I feel like that's um, the spirit of what we're doing that when the pandemic hit, um, Portland started, they jumped right on board and, and built 156 outdoor classrooms. And so this is the next wave um, of that innovative mindset. And we seek to extend and deepen the outdoor and experiential learning um, through our district, specifically through curriculum integration, environmental literacy practices and building teacher capacity. And since a lot of our students don't have access to green spaces, we felt that really creating school-based meaningful um, outdoor experiences could help diminish health inequities, um, increase SEL benefits and create new opportunities for learning um, in the school environment. And to do that, we need to create our schoolyards to be more of a living schoolyard and ecosystem that the students can actually study. Um, and we're going to create pre-K to eight, a cohort of teachers that will help design and implement units of study that are standards aligned and grade level. So the idea is really to put the outdoor and experiential learning right into the curriculum, both that already exists and that we're rolling out, such as the third grade Wabanaki studies and life science unit that involves the Presumpscot water, river, uh, river watershed. And then secondly, at the high school level, we're innovating the, the three week seat time credit recovery model into a one week immersive intensive experiential and outdoor unit to help capture those learners that may not have learned in the traditional way. And so that might look like studying geology from the mountains to the coast while in the field. And then lastly is that we're really trying to promote um, environmental literacy practices such as field journaling, nature walking, observation spots, phenology as a through line through all of our outdoor um, and experiential learning experiences that are woven through the content area. Areas. And we're so grateful for the opportunity. That's great. I look forward to seeing that. Um, RSU 71 Belfast High School is creating a marine institute. Um, this is creating a curriculum with a hands-on hands place-based learning with opportunities to get real world on water um, work experience. We have Lisa White who's going to talk a little bit about what that's going to look like. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Martin. Um, so I'm a science teacher at Belfast Area High School, and our pilot has two main components. We're looking at launching a marine institute, as Martin mentioned, and also extending our internship program. Um, for the marine institute, some of the key focuses are going to be on um, identifying community problems and actually getting the students out into um, the field and doing place-based research in addition to connecting with a community mentor um, and contributing back to um, solving community issues or um, addressing real world problems um, in the area. Uh, we're lucky to be right on the water in Belfast um, and really excited to get the students outside. The second part um, for the internship program, we're looking at hiring a coordinator right away um, to expand the internship opportunities, um, again, to build skilled um, workers and um, decrease the gap that Maine has for um, skilled workers in the STEM fields. That's great, thanks Lisa. I, I can't wait to see that up and running. So part of REV is to create opportunities for innovation across the state. REV has professional development opportunities that we can share with educators um, all the way from, from Southern Maine all the way to the top of Maine, and it's all free. This is all in an effort to really create opportunities to prototype new ideas, to sort of beta test things that in education that we often don't have the opportunity to really fully flesh out. So this is a great opportunity to work with some of our higher ed partners to create um, pilot projects uh, for both educators as well as for students to try things that we've never had the opportunity to try before. Rev is very responsive. We, we at least try to be very responsive. And one of the things we realized pretty quickly was that there was a need for development of an online platform for educators that people didn't have the uh, capacity to create something from scratch. So Rev uh, has uh, we have taken a model that was developed by a, a district right in, in Maine and created what we're calling the Accelerator Series. So um, a couple of the next couple of awardees have participated in that Accelerator Series, and so they were able to take uh, to take this course, take a model that has already been created, iterate on that model for their for their area's native needs, and then figure out a way to implement that and receive hundred thousand dollars in seed money to um, to begin that project. So uh, the first one I'd like to talk about is Bucksport, and they've created a remote learning pathway. It's a seven to 12 remote learning pathway, and this dedicated staff 
to collaborate on grade level with content teachers. Uh, I'm gonna ask Josh Tripp to talk a little bit about that project. Josh. Thank you, Martin. So yeah, I'm Josh Tripp, I'm the principal at Bucksport High School. And uh, like Martin said, you know, one thing I think we learned um, when we had to be either hybrid or fully remote is that, you know, the vast majority of students do much better with in-person learning, but there is a small um, subset of students that um, really thrived um, with the remote pathway that we provide for them actually better than they would do in person. So um, as we've returned to in-person learning, we, you know, we realized that there is a missing um, piece here in our education system um, for this small set of students that we need to help provide for. And, and like Martin said, you know, looking at our neighboring schools um, that are doing this well, and, you know, we have kind of learned um, what, what they're doing, and we want to be able to implement pieces of that um, to those students. And we're going to be looking at targeting our 7 through 12 population. Um, and I think the unique part to this is, you know, we're going to be hiring a dedicated staff member to um, work with these students. Um, but I think also the collaboration with some other local schools that are looking to do the same thing um, so that we can kind of pull resources and, and more importantly, just our collective knowledge about how we can work with these students successfully as we navigate these new waters, um, share ideas, share resources, and create, I think, um, a truly meaningful pathway um, to, a, to a Boxwell High School diploma. Great. Thank you so much, Josh. And Hampton Academy has also created uh, an REV accelerator program. And so I'm going to let Bill Tracy and his team talk a little bit about their personal learning program that includes both in-person and um, digital access. Go ahead, Bill. Thank you very much, Martin. And I do want to say thank you to REV for the opportunity to serve our students and provide a different need than we've been able to meet uh, in the past. Uh, my name is Bill Tracy. I'm the principal at Hamden Academy. I have Mary Giard here, our curriculum coordinator, and Kristen Lighthizer, um, one of our English teachers here at uh, Hamden Academy. And both did phenomenal work to get this off the ground and really look at what we can provide students. But we are looking at a model that when we saw students go to remote uh, last year, uh, we did see some students really thrive in a model that they hadn't thrived in before, as uh, Principal Tripp mentioned. What we noticed, though, throughout the entire experience was that one thing that was lacking were those connections. And that's been a big piece of our work with what we're gonna call the corral is, uh, are those connections. And what we're talking about is using this as a nine through 12 model. And it's gonna be about hiring a case manager who can work with these students and really help support them through those online shared opportunities for uh, curriculum experiences uh, with the collaboration we have in the region. But also it's gonna be a great chance for that staff member to truly guide. It's almost like an online alternative education model, but to be able to have a dedicated staff member, again, to support students in a cohort model, so they're supporting each other and working together. We're looking at this pathway to give them opportunities for what they want after school. We've built in pieces around connecting with the community. We've built in pieces around field trips. We've built in pieces around uh, really finding their individual pathway here and finding that connection that they need in order to be successful afterwards. Um, but I think this model, one, one interesting thing, uh, I think it was Kristen who came up with this corral model idea, uh, is that, you know, we have this great school building and, and students who really thrive well here, but, but there is a cap to that. There is an understanding of where and what they can do within their program. And the corral is attached as part of our program, but the sky's the limit. This idea that students can get out and have a guide with them and really get after something different in order to be successful and truly achieve a, an RSU 22 um, diploma is something that we really were looking towards uh, creating for our students. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I know that your students will be uh, very grateful to have this opportunity. So um, how the, the individuals that you have met today have gone through a pretty rigorous process. REV is designed to support innovation through the development of pilot models. So we, in collaboration with a number of other uh, partners have created a template that these guys have used to create an individual pilot that um, supports students in new and unique ways. REV is all about supporting things from the outside, the traditional uh, kind of makeup of school. So um, these guys have used that pilot, gone through a course with our higher ed partners, everywhere from UMaine to Thomas, to UNE, to Eastern Maine Community College, they're all contributing to this. So it's really a statewide collective initiative to support innovation and create opportunities for educators. All of these individuals who are receiving awards today went through that rigorous process. And uh, it was certainly, it wasn't easy and, and congratulations and thank you for your commitment, particularly in an era where everything is going on and there's, there's a lot of different competing, uh, competing 
things for your for your valuable time but you guys committed to this and, and came out on the other end with a really interesting creative opportunity for your students um, so this round today we are awarding 1.2 million dollars in our previous round we awarded over two million dollars we have rounds coming up in the very near future and there's tons of opportunities for educators across the state to get involved with this so i really encourage anybody out there who's interested in becoming uh, part of the rev community to reach out to um to the DOE or, or go right to the REV website and find out how you can get involved. We certainly have ongoing rolling classes and we're looking forward to, to working with educators across the state. The other thing we have is we have lots of opportunities for professional development. As I said earlier, everything associated with REV is completely free to teachers and administrators in the state. We really wanna reach out and support educators in new and creative uh, ways. So please, I encourage you to reach out to us if you have any questions or any ideas on how we can collaborate with your teams um, to support um, innovative practices. Um, at this point, if anybody has any questions or, or, or ideas, I'd love to hear them and we'll keep the panel right here to be able to discuss or answer specifics about their pilot. But I'd love to open the floor for any questions or, or other things that people want to talk about. And we can do that either through the chat or um, I think that we, or you can come right on the screen. Are there any questions for the, from the field right now? All right, great. Well, I appreciate people taking their time. And I'll, I'll give everyone a couple seconds here to see if they want to be, if they have any questions. But I'm really excited to share this opportunity with folks because I think that we really have an opportunity right now to sort of reframe and systemically change the deliver, delivery of how we are delivering some parts of education. And Rand is uh, sort of the ticket to be able to do that. I'm really excited. And, and again, you know, this has been an opportunity for us to use the iterative process to continuously reinvent our um, what we are doing. So the, the accelerator is a really good example of that. One of the questions that just came through, are, CT, are CTE centers and regions eligible to apply? Absolutely. REV is open to public and private pre-K through 12 um, schools throughout the state. So, so CTEs are certainly welcome to apply and we encourage them to. Um, in the, and we've given uh, several uh, awards. We've, several awards have been earned by charter schools and private schools already. Um, the next round of awards will be distributed in early June. There's ongoing classes. So if you are interested, uh, I definitely encourage you to reach out directly to us and we can try to set up either a course with a number of different schools, or even if you have a, a small, if you have a large enough group, we can set up a course specific for your school to support you and a team of educators to go through our process. Great. Okay, well, great. Well, thank you so much for taking time. Uh, I know how busy everyone is, but this is a really exciting opportunity to share this great news and to share these, these resources. The last thing I want to talk about is REV is part of a community. So the individuals that are receiving awards today and have received in the past are part of a collective community where we're kind of doing some research and we're working together to figure out what works. We have an online collaborative platform called Engine, which is very soon to be released. But that's where all of this information and all of the communication regarding REV is going to take place. So that there's a collective place that's capturing all these ideas. And people can look at the different ideas and the different pilots and then iterate on them or reach out directly to the people who are doing it. So it's ideal because it's going to all happen in one place. It won't happen in a vacuum. So you're not going to have to track down emails and, and text messages. You'll be able to go to your whiteboard space on Engine and, and work together and, and kind of trace back the, uh, the evolution of different ideas. So we're really excited to share this and it should be out very soon. We're excited to, to be able to um, announce that in the next couple of weeks. Any other questions for anybody? If so, um, feel free to reach out directly to uh, me, Martin Mackey, and my address is on the, uh, the REV website. I'm excited to be able to move forward with this. Thanks and have a great day.